Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Graphic VCO by Erica Sintz. So the Graphic VCO is Erica Sintz Wavetable Oscillator. And what makes it graphical? Well, that's quite easy. That's the big screen you see there. Uh, what this also sports, it sports two clickable encoders, one back button, at least four port meters that you can use to set all kinds of settings and you've got your CV and your audio there as well. So I don't want to keep you guys waiting. I know you are waiting for the actual module up close and personal. So I would say, here you go. So the Erica Sins graphic VCO up close and personal, you might say. It's quite a, a, a big module. And of course, the reason for that is of course the large screen that you see there. This is of course, the main attraction here as well, where you have, well, this is the start screen that you already have. And you can already see that you have quite a lot of things to do here, but it's never confusing. That's one of the great things that I found about this, this, this great little module. So I won't be doing a full, well, these are all the features, but I'm just gonna run through a couple of things that I really enjoy doing on this, this module. And I hope to, well, with that, give you a good impression of what's possible with it. So currently it is in what's called the AB mode, which is the default setting. From here, you can indeed go in and load different wave shapes. But what you can also do is create your own or edit these wave shapes. And that is of course quite a feat. So before we do that, let me just quickly connect the VCO to my audio interface. Here we go. So I'm going to grab the out one and put that in the in of the black jewel VCF also from Erica since and that's the thing I'm going to be reviewing after this one. So as you can see, this has two outputs, it has out one and out two. So currently I've got the out two uh, configured as a sub. Uh, but because we just want to focus on the wave shapes first, I'm not connecting that right now. So as you can see, I'm using the rather long uh, polar noise cables here. Uh, that's primarily so they don't uh, run over the actual device. Uh, so you can't see the screen anymore. So let's uh, have a quick try and see how easy it is to create or edit these, well, these wave shapes. So first let's uh, dive in. So here you have the existing wave shape. So that's a sign. So you can go in and change that if you want. So I can just uh, select the, just the part where I want to change it and then turn it up or down. And you can immediately hear the sound changing because of that. And it will start clipping if you go here and then you can do all sorts of nice things with that. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start from scratch. So clear it off and then say, well, we're gonna go here and I want to create something that resembles a, uh, a sign and I want to put it there and then I want to go here and turn the sign the other way around. And I want to go here and say, well, you know what? I'm uh, just gonna do a, a broader part of this and I'm gonna grab a triangle for that triangle well, around there and then I want to do another triangle around there and then we grab the smaller piece right there and we grab another look and we're just going to turn this all the way down just to get something nice going, right? So now there you have it, our very first self-designed waveform. And we can then of course play with that as much as we want. We can do all kinds of things with that. But for now, let's leave it be. Uh, what I want to do is I want to go through some of the other options that you have. So as said, within AB, you can select your, uh, your wave shapes if you want. If you want to morph between them so you can say I want to grab a uh, raw one and you can then do the morphing between them so 
so if I turn morph all the way to the right I'm getting the, the triangle like shape and if I go all the way to the left I get my sine wave back again so pretty straightforward but what you can also do is you can also go into wavetable mode which is something I really like so you have all of your banks of wave shapes so you've got your basic where you can go through and then you've got the sine wave triangle sort of um, looks all sorts of well the more common shapes that you might expect there but you also have your organs here you are really nice fm bells perfect and i can actually do a full video and i might actually do that uh, sometime to go through all of these sounds and just give everyone a good understanding of what's possible with the out-of-the-box capabilities there but it's such a nice thing to play with and you can truly as, as you saw you can actually go in and make the exact sound that you want so if you truly want to mold your personal signature sound this is the way how you should do that so let's uh, go back to uh, to basic grab the uh, the sine wave again and that's of course one of the things that you can do the other mode that we have we talked about a b we talked about the wave table is the matrix and in that matrix you can actually go in and select a portion of the well, of the, the the wave table that you have with all of these which you can then traverse either by using the uh, the dials of course or by using CV for X and Y and this is of course something that is really nice if you want to do something like noise or interesting drones then this might be just your thing if you want to traverse through that so the other mode that I haven't played that much with is drums so if I then grab my trusty LFO put it in drum mode and we then need to trigger the drums as you can hear with a with a trigger so you can actually go in and say well okay what kind of drums do you want and you can change all of these parameters see up a bit so pretty nice personally you can typically find me in the wavetable because that's something I, I, I really like to do is just play around with those different sounds there as well and see why that's so such such a compelling thing for me where you can actually do progressions through wave shapes in your song uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on a, a MIDI file uh, courtesy of Clemens Weyer's Music Productions again and that's going to be the, the song that I'm going to be using to show you what you can do with effects and all other things so for that I need to connect my Volt Peroctive here we go and put that in there here we are perfect and turn on the actual MIDI So this is a specific MIDI file with a lot of progression and a lot of uh, big differences between the notes, but still purely monophonic. So we can then go through some of these. Say, well, okay, that's something that we truly like. And have a look at the effects. So you have, of course, effects like uh, frequency modulation, ring modulation, uh, phase distortion. You can also do folding wrapping bit crushing and let's have a look at bit crush now shall we so let's uh, select that go out of this and then i'm going to be talking about the sub menu later on but first let's have a look at the built-in scope and we can actually just start playing around with the amount of effects we want to do here you already start to hear that right 
Let's try another effect. I'm always a big fan of the folding. Of course, I'm not doing this with uh, by hand, but you can of course also use uh, CD for this. Now I'm doing the morphing by using the LFO. And this is of course already giving it quite a nice effect. And if we then also want to do the ring modulation, that's something that we can do based on CD. But also the actual amount of ring modulation can be influenced. Now let's give another effect a try. Let's do uh, frequency modulation. It's just one of those things where you say, okay, well, I enjoy playing around with, uh, with music, I want something that's really dynamic. Well, this is how you can then get your effects going without using a, an external effects module or pedal. So let's uh, stop that for So the sub menu, that's where you configure the actual settings for your uh, for your secondary outputs, which is typically what you use as a sub. So if I grab another cable and I'm abusing the black jewel VCF as a mixer now, so I'm putting this into that one, and you already immediately hear that richer sound that's of course coming because this is now exactly one octave below. So you've got your main output and your sub, which is one octave below. But you can of course change that and say, well, I want that to be uh, maybe even something like two octaves below. Let's put it back up to 12 before I forget to uh, return that. Okay, then of course you can make snapshots of all your settings and you can store them. And you can of course manage the actual wave shapes that you've created, so if you want to rename them or anything else there. And then within settings, uh, you can find your information. This, the display settings, actual oscillator settings there. There you go. So if you want to do morphing, you can do that smooth as we've been doing, or you can do that in a discrete mode. I like to keep it that smooth. You can do your IO configuration, calibration there. And this is something that's really fun, the built-in quantizer, where you actually say, well, I want to have it off or I would just want to do the diatonics ones but I always prefer to grab the blues one and then everything that you play will start st starts to sound bluesy because it only allows those, blue, those blues notes. That's crazy right? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, that's perfect and then of course also your memory management so if you want to clear off things. So this is by far the most interesting oscillator or sound source I've seen and up until now I've, I've of course reviewed the Nano Ona which is by far my, my most favorite uh, analog oscillator. I've reviewed the Tip Top Audio uh, 1, a great sample player and now we've got this wave shape on steroids sound source. It is absolutely fantastic. I immediately see myself using this if I'm designing very specific but still dynamic drones uh, that will make up some of my uh, black metal inspired drone music. So I'm I'm already in love with this uh, with this module, and it's only going to get better if you ask me. So I would say I can keep on talking about this module for hours on end if I want, and if you guys want as well. Uh, but for now, I think that for this first 
look at the graphic VCL from Eric since this, this is going to be enough. Um, as mentioned, my next video will be on the Black Jewel VCF, also from Erica Synths. And uh, for now, uh, let's uh, go back to the studio and we're going to wrap this up. So that deep dive did take a bit longer than you guys typically expect from me, but I still hope you enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed diving into the graphic VCO by Erica Sins, um, whom I still have to thank for making this available to me to uh, give this a test drive and uh, see how it works. Uh, thanks, Erica Sins. And for now, I would say, well, hope you'll uh, join me for my next one. I'm going to be diving into another Erica Sins module. And for now, I would say stay healthy, stay safe, and see you then. Cheers.